Charles Katibi with Wyoming Liberty Group. The other news that's down is the, in the state of Wyoming, of course, since things are slowing down for some really horrible reasons that are affecting the main industries that run the state. The governor decided, well, it's time that we uh, go ahead and make some changes there. So, of course, he made the wisest of all decisions, right, Charles? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, when when you're when you're broke, that's the best time to go on a diet, right? Sure. So this is- <laughs> that would, yeah. Usually yeah. it's kind of forced that way. Did he come up with any kind of plan that you looked at, which you thought, I know you've been writing about this. I have one mm-hmm. of your graphs here that you thought was reasonable, or do you see this thing heavily flawed? What do you think? I mean, the thing is, is that we can't afford to keep spending at these levels. Yeah. Everybody knows this. I mean, oil and gas are, are, are really, really depressed, and coal is going away more or less, whether we like right. it or not. Um, but the, the way he went about these cuts was very strange. Rather than trying and seeking and finding out what programs do we need, what programs don't we need, what programs work, what program, and cut the ones that are a waste of time and effort, um, he just went across the board. He cut just about a little bit off of everything. Okay. Um, and that was pretty troubling. I mean, he cut, he's cut a lot of things. He's cut right. rural health, oral health, um, Medicaid, uh, took the bulk of it. And now, right. I'm not saying that uh, we, can't, we shouldn't be spending less money. We absolutely do. Um, but this is a very unstrategic way of doing it, and my fear is that a lot of patients will be hurt in the process. Sure. Now, there's some things, of course, he could have just shut down altogether, and that probably would have saved us a lot of money. But let's get into it, because in the article that you have on your mm-hmm. website at Wyoming Liberty Group, you provide sort of a graph of what he decided to cut and where, and what, what is on the graph you provided? <clears throat> So that graph just shows how exactly we're going to be cutting Medicaid. Now, we've talked about this. Wyoming has very little control over how Medicaid spends its money. So when times are tough, like now, and you want to spend and you want to reduce spending, you can't reduce it. You can't prioritize funding for the most needy, which is what you would logically do. And you can't uh, cut reimbursements for unnecessary services. Uh, what you can do is reduce reimbursements um, across the board. And this is what states always do when Medicaid, uh, when you can't pay for Medicaid. Well, let's explain and, to people reimbursements. Who gets the reimbursement? Oh, sure, sure. So when you get a Medicaid card, you don't get any financial benefits. You get a card, uh, you see your doctor, and then they get paid. And the problem with this arrangement is that when Medicaid becomes too expensive, when states can't pay for it, they cut those payments to the doctors. And what happens in other states, and this is my fear that will happen here, is that when they cut those reimbursements to doctors, the doctors won't be able to financially provide those services. Because those services cost money. They cost electricity, they cost time, and they cost a lot of labor hours. And if Medicaid isn't covering those costs, those doctors won't see them. And you see this in a whole range, most states, actually. Um, Right now, up till now, Wyoming has reimbursed doctors pretty well through Medicaid. Um, But the money just isn't there anymore. I mean, coal, oil, gas, all the revenue is going away. And that graph that I show in my article displays the cuts in those reimbursement rates by provider type. Okay. Now, so, w- would you say, though, I mean, let's take the governor's argument. Sure. Well, but if we had just taken expansion from the federal government, <laughs> that would have solved the whole problem. Absolutely not. Nope. Yeah. Absolutely not. The way Medicaid works in Wyoming is that we have, is that it's for people that truly need it. It's for, pre- it's for pregnant mothers. It's for the elderly, the disabled, and children. Right. That's what it's for. If you expanded Medicaid, you would have expanded it to people that are adults, that are non-dis- non-disabled adults, that are perfectly capable of working, paying for the health care on their own, or getting their health care through the employer, which is still an option when you go and work. Um, if you expanded it, this would have just meant that we would have had to increase our responsibility to pay for a lot of care for people that don't need the government's help. Right, and and that would also increase the number of people who would come from out of state to take advantage of all that. Oh, absolutely. We never got any clear answers on how we would make sure that they, that uh, we know that they are actually from Wyoming. Mm -hmm. That's another problem as well. That's sort of coming out of the woodwork effect we talked about. Okay, well, let's get, because I I really was, it's a simple graph that you put up, but I took a look at it and went, I don't know, it says a lot here. 
I'm going to say uh, provider rate reductions, mm -hmm. behavioral health. What is that? Mental, mental health services, mental health clinics, um, and that includes um, substance abuse. Um, so yeah, when I t the first the first one general provider provider rate reduction that's a hit to everyone across the board. That's mm -hmm. a three percent cut across everyone's reimbursement. After that, he targets everyone on an individual basis. So behavioral health that's mental health clinics, um, that's substance abuse, that's a hit. Long term care that's nursing homes. And the thing about nursing homes is that they're extremely reliant on Medicaid. Because Medicaid in the state pays for about 50 to 60 percent of all the nursing home expenses. So when you cut that, you're going to give a major hit to those nursing homes. And a lot of times they won't be able to cover their costs, and some might even have to close. Okay. So when, when I look at all of this on the chart here, mm -hmm. uh, what then would you have the governor do? I mean, I bet that would be his question. So what would you have me do? In terms of Medicaid, a lot of... Some of this is outside of our control. I will, there is a ray of sunshine, though. Uh, Paul Ryer, the Speaker of the House of the U.S. House of Representatives in Congress, unveiled a series of reforms that he wants to put forward if we got a Republican in the White House um, next February. Mm. And one of those reforms, he's, he's outlined a number of health care reforms. The biggest one I'm most interested in is block granting Medicaid. Now, what that would do, it, was, it would allocate a set block of funding to every state. But the good news is, is that it would give, give states a lot more flexibility and freedom to reform the Medicaid program. We could alter benefits. We could alter eligibility. There's a whole number of reforms we could do. Um, and that could give me or any future governors the tools that they need to prioritize funding and resources for the truly needy. Um, hmm. okay. That would be the... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it's it's interesting when I take a look at what you can and can't cut. I'm afraid, though, of when you talk about a program like that, mm -hmm. you see if, see if this makes sense. So, OK, so we're going to shift. We're going to do this a different way. But then that program explodes and gets out of control. Which program are you? Referring Anyone. To? And I mean, in other words, any government alternative that we pick. Yeah ends up becoming the next millstone around our neck because the government just grows it out of control. No, you're absolutely right. The, and, here's the, and here's the thing. Even if, even if you manage to do uh, reforms, that's just the nature of government. Yeah. You get entrenched interests, you get entrenched lobbyists, and they want right. to grow the program. What you need to do, and this is something everyone should be asking now that we have a lot less money, is how do we institute those reforms and um, those incentives within government to keep an eye on cost savings and keep an eye on cost effectiveness. Right. Um, and there are a number of ways you could do that. Um, what some states have done is created uh, sunset commissions. Now, these are committees that are tasked exclusively with monitoring what the rest of the state is doing. And they put every agency up for a, a timely review. And if they don't think an agency or a program is, uh, be, is being effective, it's slated to be cut. Texas has had a lot of success with this. They've cut about a billion dollars uh, worth of wasteful spending over the years. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's such an effective state. Why isn't um, Wyoming doing that? Uh, funny enough, actually, we had a Sunset Commission in the early 80s. Yeah. It was very ineffective in that it did not review every agency. It did not have veto power. Because right. an effective committee has veto authority over these agencies. If they think if they're being wasteful, ineffective, or anything, it's slated for removal, and only a vote by the legislature could revive it. Um, so, and, and to answer your question, we really didn't have a, a pressing need to in the eyes of many legislators and voters. We had a lot of money coming in. We didn't really need to prioritize. Um, but now this might be a good time to look at it, because we don't have that much money and we have a lot of uh, promises we've made to a lot of people. Well, so there's the next thing. I got about a minute here. But a lot sure. of the promises that we've made, it looks like at this point we're just going to have to tell some people, sorry, can't do that. Because, you know, the state's not going to start borrowing money. We got this balanced budget thing. Yeah. No, we can't borrow money from China like Washington yeah. does. Right. Um, but one benefit of this crisis, though, is that we can start to look, if we actually look at those reforms, like a Sunset Commission, and there's a number of other reforms that could do this, we could get into the health department's budgets and other, and other agency budgets and see what are they up to, 
what's working, what's not working, and let's prioritize funding for the things that work and cut uh, what what doesn't. We don't have the money for all the right. a lot of the bells and whistles we've been paying for. Okay. This is a really interesting article. I might just put it on my reading assignment page for tomorrow. Where do people find it and the other work that you have? You can go to wyliberty.org. I've written a lot on Medicaid and a little bit on Sunset Commissions as well. Okay. Charles, as always, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you.